So what's everybody sewing? You all ready? It's June. Must be sewing some summer stuff. Or start now for fall if you're like me. Oh, it's going to take a while. You've got that t-shirt. I'm so close. You got a t-shirt started. Yeah. So got 12, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. I got so far in a short amount of time. And then what happened? It stalls. Stall. Life. Mm -hmm. Then life happened. Yeah, it does. It absolutely does. Well, I'm working on something I'll show while we're waiting for everybody to get here. So I bought this t-shirt that I'm wearing. For shame. Yeah. You got to do it. You got to do it. Anyways, I think it's real cute. Yeah. And I like the way it fits. It's a little big in the shoulder. So I took my uh, sloper from my five easy tees and cut the same design. Uh, you know, the same hem shape and everything. But I know how to fit this upper part because I've already got the sloper or the 5 easy tees fitted to me. So I'm able to get this same look from the Stop the Insanity series. Remember, you take the pattern you know already fits well, and then you can just make those simple changes. So like with a t-shirt, it's so easy because it's usually the neckline, the sleeve, or the length. And you can have so many different looks from the same pattern. So that's what I'm working on All right. for one of my summer projects, summer garments. Very cool. Mm. Uh, Mary Berg is sewing a sleeveless golf top. Okay. That sounds fun. Uh, Mary Jackson is sewing a t-shirt and then a summer night shirt. Uh, Lyndon, Lyndon, I combined your, your first and last name. <laughs> that could be now you're Lyndon. Uh, Linda Benson is sewing for her trip to Italy. All to match black. Sure. You got like a mix and match wardrobe. So you can have like what I like to do in the summer is take a black slacks, white slacks, black short, white shorts, and then have all of these different tops to mix with it. So yeah, good on you. Uh, Pamela it just cut out a summer dress and a tunic. Uh, she has to get another yard of fabric since there wasn't enough. Hate when that happens. Yeah. Um, oh, good. Uh, la, la, la. Oh, man. No, 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 no. There's some good ones in here, but my thing glitched. Hold on. Oh, she's got some good ones, so we'll wait. Uh, Where's my big needle? Bev is working slash struggling on her sloper. <laughs> Ruth is... Oh, she's just saying hi. Hi. Hi, Ruth. Um, Monica is working on a t-shirt, and she's going to make her hubby a new Islander shirt. Oh, I talked with Monica. She called the other day. Okay. Yes, and she thought Father's Day was this weekend, and she wanted to hurry up and get the fabric, and I had to laugh because I we had to tell her that she's a week ahead because I got Mother's Day mixed up. And I sat in my house on Mother's Day thinking, nobody called. Never, ever, <laughs> ever have we not even, like, spent Mother's Day together. Even COVID, we I know. brought flowers, <laughs> talked through the door, everything. Well, that's what I know. So I wasn't upset. Like, I wasn't crying in my... Uh, in my room or something but it was just so odd to me but it never occurred to me to look at the calendar and apparently same thing happened to her she got it in her mind that this was father's day you shouldn't have told her because then it would be done oh no because we, she didn't have the fabric oh. she, she, she okay. yeah. <laughs> so she's got time to make it now but uh -huh. apparently he really likes his islander shirt sorry i changed no that's it. a good story <laughs> why didn't i hear from you uh, Julia made a summer robe using no pins, no basting, and then she put in parentheses, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> good girl. And she changed the order of construction. Yes. Go, Julia. Very good. Um, Lucy is sewing the Islander shirt for Father's Day. Um, and... 
Aries asking on if you serge the side seams, how do you do the curved hems by the seam? This, this time? I don't know yet, Mary, but I'll tell you next week. <laughs> Well, I, I've looked at the way they did it, and that's what I like about some really, um, and this came from a, a better uh, uh, line, so it um, was a little pricey, but when you get those garments, those are the best ones to look at to see some of their construction techniques. So, you know, Brenda and I, we were purchasing some new clothes as well as making new clothes. But what we recognize is, is we have to alter everything. There isn't anything other than maybe a basic t-shirt. And then you're willing to accept that maybe the shoulders are a little too big or the neckline's not quite what you wanted, but it's ready to wear and that's what you do. But when you get the better ready to wear and then you have to alter it and you go inside and you see how they made it, light bulbs go off. And you learn a lot. So that's exciting too. So I will let you know how that all works, but. Or it doesn't work. Well, I think I know, but I didn't do it yet. I just got it to that point before the show and I didn't. Uh, so I'm still working. All right. Monica said that she really enjoyed the story. So a funny story. <laughs> and I shared it with my family. They all laughed at me saying, um, you found a friend who loses time just <laughs> like you do. But what's impressive is you're ahead of the game because I don't know if you're like Janet. It's usually like, <laughs> oh, shoot, it's Mother's Day. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's whatever already. So being ahead is, hey, it's good. Um, um, one more I want to read because this is fun. Karen Gold, she is doing five altered swim towel Baja cover-ups for three generations grandma daughters granddaughter and grandson excellent so she's taking like beach towels and she's making the baja that's what it sounds from the like. beach towels for the whole um the share, whole group. share the pictures when yes you're done and we, on the beach you know and facebook has done us a great disservice and no one's quite figured out if they're ever going to bring it back but they haven't allowed fans to post any longer so what we want you to do is just send them directly to us. Send us the highest resolution you can take, um, and we will start doing posts on Facebook so that we can help inspire others with what you're doing and give you an opportunity to share some of the fun things that you're making and learning. All right. So let's get started because Janet has a lot, multiple pages today. She came very prepared. She was almost on time, too. Let's give it to her. Um, so let's do it. All right. So, well, I'm constantly on the prowl for a way to get the concept across as to why patterns don't fit. And since I started in this industry several decades ago, I, I have heard this over and over and over again. And what I hear is, why don't they make patterns that fit? Why don't they make patterns that fit? And I even took a woman on one of our tours in New York into the simplicity uh, design rooms where they design the patterns and everything. And the president of simplicity came in to do a little talk for us. And this woman grabbed the chair, got right up in front of that woman and said, now, you explain to me why you don't make patterns that fit. Oh, we were so uh, embarrassed. And we got her out of there really quick. But the problem is, is if you look, honestly look at the bodies of just the people that are around you right now, you're going to see they're not shaped the same. So yeah, they make patterns that fit. They fit someone who's five foot six who has specific hourglass proportions, which means evenly spaced from bust to waist and waist to hip, and also uh, decreasing by about 10 degree, 10 inches and going back out by 10 or nine inches. Most of us aren't those proportions. And even if we are, they're not exactly in the same places. So this is why patterns don't fit. So when we look at a pattern, and we say, oh, this fits a 36 bust, 28 waist, 38 hip. That's me. And we make it up and it doesn't fit. It hangs funny and it's too big here and too tight there. Why is that? Well, 
I'm going to show you here with some uh, photographs that I've created to help kind of bring the point home as to why you've got to stop and fit your patterns before you cut them out. So patterns are drafted to fit again, somebody who's 26 years old, five foot six in very good physical shape and has an hourglass figure. That's none of us. I bet if there's somebody here that re meets those specifications, uh, send us a little. So it all. So all the things, <laughs> they're all for you. Uh, so knowing that the, the perfect pattern does not exist unless it's custom drafted for your body is the first step to getting it, to having more fun with your sewing, to understanding that it must be some changes made so that it will look and fit well and look well on my body. So we're going to take a look at some of the proportion differences to help bring some of that information home. So um, let's take a look at the first illustration. Let's get this out of the way, I think. And you're going to turn your light on. Oh, yes, I will. Talk about yourselves. <laughs> Oh, okay. Hopefully I don't create a shadow. All right, so let's take a look here at five different women and they are all different heights. The one in the middle, we're gonna call her kind of our pattern model because she is five foot six. Her measurements might not be in the right proportions exactly, but we're gonna call her so the distance from her bust to her shoulder is indicated by this white arrow. So if we take that same length arrow and put it on the tallest woman in the group, this woman is six foot tall. She's four inches taller than this woman. And there is a slight difference from her shoulder to her bust. Now take a look at this woman. She's considerably shorter than both of these women but she's the same distance from her bust to her shoulder as the five foot six. And you can see these two shorter ladies, even though this one's shorter than this one, she has a shorter span between her bust and her shoulder. But you can see her bust is higher. That's one of the reasons. So as you can see, all of these people, every pattern that is made is drafted the beginning draft is for someone five foot six with specific proportions. Now, when they take that pattern and then she's probably a size six, that, that fit model, and they grade it into the eight, 10, 12, 14, they stay with those proportions. So it doesn't matter what your width is. These proportions are going to stay very similar. Now, when I move from a six to an eight, this might shift slightly, slightly, maybe a quarter, maybe an eighth of an inch. So these proportions don't change as much as the ones that go horizontal. So that is bust to shoulder. So now let's take a look at waist to hip. So waist to hip is very enlightening too, because again, here's our five foot six. This is the distance that the pattern is going to be. This woman is going to use the same pattern and her distance is exactly the same, even though she's considerably shorter. So the proportion of waist to hip for these two ladies is the same, but you can see there's a big gap here. This woman is much shorter. So that's going to mean that her hip line is going to be too low in, let's say she's making a dress. And here we go. This one's just a little bit shy. So hers is going to be off as well. So oh, this is the, they're asking, isn't that bust to waist? Sorry. Yeah. It says waist and hip, but it's. Yes. I'm sorry. Anyways, bust to hip is what it is. I didn't catch that. Wait a minute. Shoulder to bust, waist to hip. This is 
waist to knee. So this is bust to hip. And here's an interesting thing to know. Sorry about the mislabeling. But anyway, it's interesting to know. See where this lady's hip line is? See how low it is? When we go and we draft, we measure from the waist down to the widest part of the hip. The very widest part. See here, the widest part of this hip. That's important because that's the circumference of that hip measurement that needs to go around your body so that your dress or skirt hangs very nicely. If your hip measurement is in the wrong place, you're going to have an ill-fitting garment. Maybe it's going to be all the way up here and it's too big and too loose and it, and then just bags coming down or the reverse would be even worse. It'd be too tight and wouldn't hang right. So these proportions are things that you can easily change in a pattern. And we have done this before where we just if it's too long of a proportion, we fold the pattern out. And if it's too short, we slice the pattern and let in that little extra distance. So again, from knee to waist is a very, quite varied. And no one has exactly the same proportions as the five foot six girl. So she's gonna be able to cut out her pattern and all these proportions are gonna be correct. It doesn't mean the ease is going to be what she wants. So we always have to take that into consideration. But today we we'll really want to talk about proportions and why patterns don't fit. So if the waist on this pattern is here, it's not going to fit any of the rest of these ladies. All right, let's see if there's any questions on the concept here. Nope, everybody's yeah, getting it. But feel free to. <laughs> but you know what we do when we lengthen or shorten a pattern. So be, if we had to, we had to shorten this because we could see it's several inches too long. So if we had to shorten this and it was a dress, we would just take the appropriate fold in here. So if we needed to take two inches out, we would do it a one inch fold, which would equal two inches in distance. And then we'd know that pattern's going to fit her. And knowing these things ahead of time allows you to get the right curvature of the side seam to fit your torso properly. And then if there's a little extra ease, you can always take that in. That is easy to do. But if the proportions are all off, it doesn't matter. You can't, you can't fix it sometimes at that point. Okay, let's talk about when we draft a pair of pants. So when we draft a pair of pants, like I was saying that we're gonna figure out where the waist is. And incidentally, when we draft, we measure the front of the waist and the back of the waist because they are not identical. You never just measure around and divide in half. It's very important to know that the front measurement is a different than the back. So we know that she's matching right up with this pant draft here. And here's where the widest part of her hip is. And here's where the widest part of this pant is. So this is where the hip was drafted for these pants. But this is where her hip line is. So let's say that her hip line is seven and a quarter inches down from her waist. But on this pant, they've done it nine. So she just needs to take that one and three quarters out of between here and here. And now it's going to sit right on her body. Okay, now let's look at another pair of pants. What a lot of uh, sewers don't realize is, is that when we draft a pant, we always, it's very important to consider where the knee is. The pants are shaped by waist, hip, crotch, knee, ankle. So we're taking all of these measurements. So if you're short like I am and you buy a pair of pants and you decide, well, I'll just, or you get a pattern either case, and I'm just going to cut them off. 
and for me, it's like three or four inches. Now the actual shape of these pants is off because the knee was drafted to be here, but my knee is probably up here. And now the hem of this pants, the circumference of the hem of this pants is much wider than it, the design intended it to be. So now your pants aren't quite the design that it was intended. So they're not gonna hang or look the same as they would on a taller person. Well, let's take bell bottoms, for instance. When I was a teenager back in the late 60s, early 70s, bell bottoms were huge. And a short girls were always upset because if we had to shorten them, we pretty much lost the be most of the bell, which is what you can see here by this red line. We lost this much distance, which is probably 20, 25% of the circumference of the pant, not to mention our, our knees are really supposed to be, this is where the knee was drafted, but the person's knees way up here. So these aren't going to hang as nice and they're not going to be as wide of a bell at the bottom as the design intended them to be. All right, my last example is something that was uh, a personal experience in helping somebody with a wedding. And we go to the bridal salon and we picked out the brides and the bridesmaids picked out the bridesmaids dresses and they had very full skirts, but they were close fitting at the hips. So they were gored probably, but a nice big full circumference here. And two of the girls were very short in stature. And I mentioned, I'm very, just step back a little bit, but you were thinking because you got a shadow. Line. Oh, sorry. I'm very concerned that when you have this skirt, it's not going to look like the other bridesmaid skirts. And the woman at the salon said, oh, no, we know better. We will shorten it from the top. So they would have had to take the skirt off. They would have had to shorten it and then reshape it from the top. But when we got there to pick the dresses up, they had not done that. They had just cut it off. And those bridesmaids dresses did not look as flattering or as nice as they were intended to because of that misproportion uh, done by altering the, the dress wrong. Okay, so that is what's important about understanding why patterns don't fit and how to make them fit. I want to see if there's any questions and then I want to talk about pattern alterations. Yes, we have a question. A small question. Mary Berg is asking, is there a standard for proportions? So many patterns don't have bust, waist, hip marked on the pattern anymore. Well, that's unfortunate, and I know it happens. And no, there isn't. And just because, as humans, we range from, what, over seven foot tall to three foot as adults. Um, so there is no standard. You know, people that um, we work with, um, a lovely lady in uh, Seattle, and she's a little person. And one of the things she did, because she was such a great seamstress, and she had taken a lot of our classes, so she's pretty fast, too. Right after Christmas, she belonged to a little people's club, and they brought her all their Christmas gifts because their bodies have the same proportions in some areas, but their arms and legs are short. So she, so they have to buy the uh, regular size garments and then have everything altered in the sleeves and the legs. And she got pretty good at that. But um, yeah, we're just, there's just too many of us in too many shapes and sizes for there to be anything standard. Um, Marvin is asking, how do you make changes in pants for flat bottoms? Flat bottom. It's all about the curvature of the hip. So when you 
flat bottom people don't usually need much of a curve here. So that's probably going to come out. And then that whole crotch seam in the back. See, crotch seams are curved and they come around for the buns to sit in. But if you don't have buns, they don't need as much of a curve. They kind of make a quick uh, right turn. So that's, uh, that's the difference. And I have a flat bottom, so I know. <laughs> crotch never fits me ready to wear crotches never okay. patterns so never. that is the right after marvin's flat bottom question <laughs> is sally begging please please what about the crotch i'm five foot and it's always too low yes mm -hmm. and that means that you have to shorten it however as uh we talk about a lot in islander sewing systems especially since we uh, work so closely with uh, fashion patterns and we have all their products now for pattern drafting and pattern fitting. Really the only way to get an appropriate pant pattern to fit you is to do a draft. It's just the only way because there is so many nuances. We just looked at the person from straight on. So let's turn them sideways. Now we have different shapes come going on too some people might be the same width but they're not the same thickness so now we have a three-dimensional body with lots of different curvatures curves on the side curves in the back curves in the front curves between the legs so many that it makes so much more sense because when you draft you follow a system that system is causing you to measure every different part of that body to get those proportions correct. Then you just, it's actually, I always said, the first time I did it, I was amazed at how easy it was to do. This was a long time ago, but it was just like dot to dot. Because once you got done, you just follow the directions and you create this and then you just connect it. And all of a sudden, wow. It's a pant pattern. Doesn't look like any other pant pattern you've ever seen, but it fits your body. Once you have a sloper for anything, whether it's a pant or a bodice or a skirt, you can compare that to any commercial pattern and make the corrections. Or you can take that pattern, like what I'm doing to recreate the shape of this t-shirt, and use your original pattern and just make the design line changes. Pam, did you feel like she was copying what your comment was? Because <laughs> I, she can't see it. Oh. Um, Pam co commented just a little bit ago, in my younger, um, I could make Vogue size 12 pattern always fit like it was drafted for me. Now that I'm a senior, nothing fits, especially pants. Found the answer in Connie's book, Pattern Making Made Easy. After I had drafted the pattern, it looked like no pattern you would ever see in a commercial pattern so you basically said exactly what she said but there it goes to show that and the reason i know that is because of all the pant classes we've taken and how many times people have said oh i must have done something wrong this doesn't look right there's no darts in the front something i must have done something wrong no your body doesn't need darts in the front and the draft will tell you that as you follow the directions, all of a sudden, well, I don't have any room for darts. Oh, you don't have room because you don't need it, which means your waist isn't that much of a difference between your waist and your hip in a certain area. It won't need the dart. So, but yeah, we have that all the time. They take a look at the draft and they think, oh my gosh, I must have done something wrong until they stitch it up and put it on. They go, oh, this is nice. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> anyway. That's the way to get a proper fitting pair of pants is to do your own draft. And um, I'll be teaching uh, a class, a lecture uh, demo class at American Sewing Guild in New York City in July on uh, pant drafting and why you need to do a pant draft. Okay, I want to also talk about other types of fitting techniques. So there are a lot of pattern alteration systems out there and those of you who follow us regularly probably read the article i wrote a few months ago about pattern fitting systems and i actually got some really nice 
feedback from other professionals in the industry telling me, boy, I really like the way you, you said that. And it is so true. And what the crux of the issue, the uh, article was, is that some of them work and some of them don't. Some of them work some of the time, but none of them work all the time on all types of bodies. So what you've probably been taught if you have a, a larger bust is a full bust adjustment. A full bust adjustment is necessary because most patterns are drafted for a B cup and most of us are C or D. So yes, you do need to do a full bust adjustment, but you need to make sure the proportions are correct first and the ease is correct first before you do that full bust adjustment. Some of the rest of us know that we have a rounded back, so we know how to make that adjustment. And, you know, there are a couple of other minor corrections that people know they have, but most of us don't even know some of the corrections we need to make. Most of you don't even know that one of your shoulders is at a different tilt than the other or might be longer than the other one. Um, there are just so many, many people have tilted waists. And sometimes the waist is tilted low in the front and high in the back. And that's why your pants won't fit because you need an angle. Some are um, tilted from side to side. And those people need a specific second draft. They have to draft their right side separate from their left because they aren't the same. They aren't the same at all from one side to the other. It'll be a difference, a different distance from their waist to the fullest part of their hip from the left to the right because they are not symmetrical there. So there's just so many different um, issues that these pattern alteration systems can't address. And because you're not a pattern drafter and you do them and they if, and if they don't come out right, you don't know why. You followed the directions, it worked before, but it didn't work this time, and you don't know why. So then there's the idea that has been sold to a lot of home sewers, the custom pattern making software. So for, I don't know, maybe a thousand, maybe under $2,000, these people will sell you a software. And basically the dream is, is that you put in your measurements, you pick out the design you want, click, 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 and out spits a pattern that's perfect custom draft for you. No, 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 never going to happen. First of all, it's such an inexpensive software. It isn't robust enough to cover all the different angles to, to create the pattern. And I know because I've tested several of these, I've been asked to work and cooperate with some of these companies and I test their product and I know it doesn't work. And the problem is, is that I have pattern drafting knowledge. So if it spits out a pattern that's not going to work, a lot of times I can see it right away. But even if I don't see it right away, I know what's wrong when I sew it up and I could fix it. But someone who doesn't have any drafting experience is going to be in the dark. They're just going to know it didn't work, but they are not going to know why. And nine times out of 10, unfortunately, they blame themselves and it's not your problem. So let me tell you, good pattern drafting software that's used in the garment industry starts at something like 12 grand and goes up into maybe 30. Those are robust enough programs to create a very nice draft, but it would still need to be confirmed and maybe likely tweaked a little bit for a custom fit. Yes. Yeah, so not custom fit, but you're talking about the software. Connie had a comment, uh, kind of question, more comment. Okay. Um, that I think goes along with what you're saying here. And she says, not referring to your patterns. Thanks, Connie. Uh, I never understand why so many online designers think that your arms get longer for each plus size. We need width, not length. Ha <laughs> ha. My arms are still the same length as they were when I wore a 6'7", but my biceps definitely are not. 
Well, that's a very, very good point, Connie. And anyone who's heard my lecture about grading plus size has heard me say that. Nobody wants their shoulder seam down to their elbow. And that's what happens with a two or a three X. And I see people with that and I feel bad because they have no choice. And here's the, it could be fixed so easily. If we could just round up all of the garment makers on the planet and get them to buy into the fact that the grading system doesn't work past the extra large. So what we have is a grading system that tells us that if we go from one size to the next, it will it will require us to make the shoulder a quarter of an inch longer, make the arm side an eighth of an inch longer, make you know the neckline this or that. Just keep, as you grade out, you keep getting a little bit bigger. Well, that works from a size two to a size 16. But once you get into the plus size, these people aren't, bigger they're heavier okay they have more uh tissue on their body but they their arms and their legs didn't get any longer and that's the problem they continue to use the same grading system and continue going longer and longer until the shoulders are like there's nobody that has shoulders that long and so Back where, before Connie started in the home industry, she was working for a designer that did plus size. And she, Connie herself, personally developed the grading system for plus size that doesn't let that happen. So when you get into our patterns, or if you want to do grading, you, we, have the, uh, we have the complete workbook and grading ruler for it as well you won't find that your shoulder seams end up at your elbow with our patterns because they're graded um, according to Connie's system. But it's the only, the only system I know, and I don't know of any commercial companies using the better system yet. So yes, that is why. So anyway, um, that's how I feel, you know, about the uh, pattern drafting software. And if somebody wants to prove me wrong and they have a software that is really what it says it is and it will uh, help us do better, I want to see it because I would love it. But I just don't think that it is doable at this time. So that leaves us with the perfect way to fit. How do we fit? We fit by draping on the form or the body. We're going to drape on our own body to get the actual blueprint of our sloper so that we know if one shoulder is a quarter of an inch longer than the other. We know where we uh, need to make proportion adjustments. We get all of that into a sloper. Now we know, and we mark on the sloper, this is my bust line, this is my waistline, this is my hip line. I don't care what McCall's calls their waist or their hip. If I want to use a McCall pattern, I'm going to pull it out, and I'm going to pull out my sloper, and I'm going to go, look, my bust to waist, I'm going to throw out a number, 12 inches. Theirs is 14. Well, I just have to shorten it two inches, and now my bust and waist are in the right place. So by using that sloper, I can adjust any pattern. So for those of you who just want to make sure the pattern fits, but you want to continue to buy commercial patterns, that's still the only way to fit and get your sloper. For those of you who want to try your hand at designing, and I've seen a lot of people end up after they get the sloper done, go, hmm, man, well, what happens if I add this kind of a collar? Well, how do I put this kind of a sleeve on? And pretty soon they're having some fun designing. But in either case, the sloper on your own body or on a custom form that is designed exactly as your body is, is the only real way to get a good fit. Silence? <laughs> Do we have crickets? Yeah, I have uh, more questions from earlier and we can wait to see. Um... Oh, well, and Joni wants to know, are your classes filled up at ASG? Well, I I don't know how much room is in. I have two lecture classes, which take a lot of people. So those might still be open. 
and my afternoon um, bound buttonhole class still had a couple of seats available in it. So the uh, the ones that are open, I know the what, when, and where, which is a very good class, is not, at, uh, not as full. full as the pant one. Yeah. So, um, so that's yes what, and no. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you could go to asg.org and look it up. On and there. if there's anything you're interested in, get in on the wait list. There is, you would not believe how often there's something happens to allow a few more people in the class or somebody plane is late or they have to cancel due to emergency. So there's always options. So get on those wait lists if you're interested. Uh, Connie wants to know, is there a DVD for pattern drafting? I do better with seeing something than reading it. No, and you know, pattern drafting, well, there is for the pants. So you'll find that uh, our my book on uh, making your own pattern as well as making um, your muslin. I added to the book that Margaret started by putting in the muslin and a couple of other things. So that book has a companion USB that comes with it that was done by Margaret, but it's the pant drafting system. But as far as a general pant, uh, drafting, no, because it's just way too complex. And, uh, but by taking one or two classes, you should be able to follow the book just fine after that. But I understand what you mean. You like to actually physically see it and have uh, somebody help you to get started. So you really get off on a good start. But we've had quite a few people here purchase the book and really uh, find their way uh, into creating some really fun stuff. So it is doable. It's well written. Uh, Evelyn is asking, when altering shoulder to bust, is the dart tip your point to measure to on a pattern? It is if that's where your bust uh, apex is. So you want, yes, that's yes what you no. want. This is the <laughs> apex. Here's your shoulder. If this is the exact measurement, if it's not, you're going to have to shorten or lengthen. And everybody's different there. It's very different. Make sure when you do measure that, that you are wearing the bra that, or the style of bra that you would be wearing with that garment. So many of us have multiple types of bras that we might wear. And so you want to make sure because that will impact uh, the distance. Mm -hmm. Um. Ingrid, do you have advice for modifying patterns or creating a block sloper for those that are apple potato shaped? Most patterns seem to be drafted for those who have a defined waistline that goes in. I'm not talking about a lower tummy adjustment. Yeah, I, ha I have virtually no waistline. And it doesn't, uh, to alter the pattern would just be, um, I would create a sloper. I would go, uh, Connie's got them on our website, get the sloper block that you would like. We actually have, I'll tell you, um, is we have a woven bodice fitting kit and we have a knit fit kit. The knit fit kit's on sale right now. The woven bodice kit will allow you to choose, uh, the larger one will allow you to choose all three of the and sloper bodices. But if you just want to start with one, if you have a big bus, start with 1301. That is the shoulder princess seam. So that allows you to take it in and out and to get a really good shape across the bust. And it will also allow you not to take it in at the waist because you don't need it taken in at the waist. But you'll be surprised, and I have no waist, but you'll still want a curvature where the waist is supposed to be on your side seam because it gives you the illusion, the illusion, the illusion. And we want that. <laughs> we don't need everybody to know. We yeah. Know. yeah. <laughs> so I think I asked, but anyways, make a sloper. You'll be glad you did. We have lots of support. 
There's also on our fitting page, you can download uh, the form on just, just how to do it, step-by-step -step how to do it. And then should you need uh, my help, there's also a support package, an inexpensive support package you can purchase where we go back and forth uh, with photographs online. So um, we'll get we'll we'll give you all the help that you need. But start out with the pattern, see what you can do. There's also with that woven kit a video that's Connie's DVD on uh, truing up a sloper, uh, a bodice sloper. So lots of support that way. Did I answer your question? Okay, good. <laughs> Tampons I get off in the weeds. That's what I have. Do you have anything else? No, I don't think so. Except for, yeah, I mentioned that the knit bodice is on, uh, kit is on sale. And that's a really good place to start. And that's exact, that sloper is what I'm working with. And you will see on in the playlist on YouTube, we have the Knit Fit series that we did during COVID. Forgive my horrible hairstyle during that period um anyway uh where we show you that you uh how to fit that but but the biggest and the most important thing to understand if you're going to do this listen carefully we are used to lining up the raw edges of the fabric and sewing our five eighths or whatever seam allowance right that will not be the case in a sloper you're going to smooth up the front and smooth the back and then pin it together. There may be a difference of a half an inch. Okay. Don't worry about those raw edges being together because those raw edges being together is why the pattern didn't fit you in the first place. So we don't care if they're not together anymore because we're going to create a whole new back pattern piece, a whole new front. And those uh, pinned areas are going to give us our stitching line. And it's really, really simple once you catch on. And the knit is the easiest to fit. We don't have to have any darts or any extra seaming. It's just a matter of smoothing and getting it uh, to hang properly on our body. Okay. So, very good. Very good. Very good. And um, I guess that's it. If you've ready to make a father's day gift that islander shirt kit's a great uh project i see several people are making them in case you didn't know when it was it is coming up Do you have but it's week not this weekend <laughs> we can have. oh boy so um i can't think of anything else can you no nope. we already said you know if you're interested in asg um the american sewing guild where janet will be teaching um go to asg.org uh, if you have any questions for us, the best way to reach Janet, Brenda, is um, islandersewing at comcast.net. Yep. And, oh, I had a point and I lost it. Mm -hmm. That's, it might come back. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not coming. <laughs> oh, shoot. She could put it in the comments if you... If I think of it later, later, it had something new. ASG or email or YouTube? Was it YouTube? Something I wrote recently. Uh, and oh, advice. So if you did not see it, you can get it out uh, the newsletter. Um, you can get it out of the archives. On our website, we archive the newsletters. But there was an article that I wrote about. Advice. Advice. And not taking bad sewing advice. And the fact that so many uh, sewing mentors out there are giving sewing advice as it was given to them. But maybe they didn't ask why, or maybe they never tried it a different way. And maybe their results are just okay, and they don't know that they could do better. So don't always just take the advice carte blanche. Take a look, think about it, think it through, and then test it. Test their system. 
So, you know, I did Mythbusters and it's on the website. But one of the ones that I talked about in that article was the old, uh, and you may not have been taught this, but a lot of people were, was called Press As You Sew, which meant that once you um, sew a seam, you take it to the ironing board and without opening it up, you have to press that stitching line. Then you can open it up and press it open. Don't ask me. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. And the only answer I ever got from anybody who told me they were taught to do it was that it was so it would meld the stitches. Well, if you melded stitches, you would never be able to pick them out. And they won't meld. If melding become, means become one. Though thread does not become one with the fabric. And it doesn't really make any difference whatsoever, except for it takes you longer to make the project. So that's just one of the things that's just been passed down year after year. And somebody thought it was a good idea. And the next hundred people just followed suit. So think about it. And if you have any questions, and I've been getting a lot of questions since I wrote that. If you have any questions, if I know the answer, I will be happy to share it with you. So please send your emails, uh, any questions like that. Um, and we're here for you. And I wish we could be here every week. And hopefully one day we will again. But not this summer for sure. Um, but we're working on some exciting new things for fall. So stay with us. And we'll see you again next month for sure. But we're here. Uh, email us anytime. We'd love to hear from you. All right. Have fun sewing. So that's Janet Prey and Jessica Johnson for Islander Sewing Systems. We're so glad you joined us today and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Happy sewing. Bye now. Yeah.